All right, YouTube, Pixel is back, and I have today the update for part two of the Multi-Strike Howl Trickster. Um, it's been a great league starter. Basically, it was a league starter <coughs> designed to get you through maps, um, complete the Atlas, kill Shaper, and start farming your T16s. Where it fell off was Uber Elder, and maybe going back with better gear, um, there would be a little more potential there, but... Um, Basically, what we're doing here is demonstrating how this integrates with an Atlas strategy. So, we're running all of our prophecies. We've got some Einhar, we've got some Alva. It's pretty good. Um, we put a couple of sextants on here and get started. Okay, now we're ready to run our map, and um, we've got a fairly decent roll here, so let's get on with it. Um, I think uh, for purposes of demonstration, Beyond should be uh, pretty good. Um, maybe we can get a little single target demonstration. That's a new one. Alright, I guess we'll go in here first. So, as we can see, this is a uh, high attack speed, high movement speed. How we're built with a hey, flame dash wasn't working with lots of lightning damage, flat lightning damage added to attacks. Um, our fundamental uniques are, for now, an Astramentus, um, but the uh, the most important thing is the Howa Claw. Now, you get these claws from the Breach Lord Ash, and why don't we um, do a little bit less of that? Okay. You get these claws dropped from the Reach Lord, so it's a little bit difficult um, as a true league starter, but a couple days into the league, they'll be around, people will be finding them. Um, so it does have potential as a league starter. Um, as you can see, we're using Molten Strike. We are dealing flat lightning damage added to our projectiles, and we're scaling damage in a no number of other ways. We are a trickster and we take Harness the Void to get a 5% chance at gaining 100% of damage as extra chaos damage. Um, this is pretty good for us because being Molten Strike, we are getting a lot of hits. Um, I think we fire about 80-something um, balls per second um, with flasks up. Um, we can we can check on that later, but um, there it is. We have hit level 97, so that means that um, perfect timing for a video because now the tree is complete, and anything that any any points that we get from beyond here are going to be um, essentially just a bonus. So we'll allocate our last point when we get back to the hideout and. Um, that feels pretty good after um, feeling like everything went pretty slow for that whole level. Took a little while. Um, what's this? We left the yellow sorcerer boots on the ground. In which meta? No. Alright. Where's the rest of my map? Okay, there it is. Uh, we're using Ancestral Call to um, enable pack clear um, and as a 
major um, support for uh, dealing boss damage. So for anyone who doesn't know, Molten Strike combined with Ancestral Call allows you to proc three times um, the number of attacks on a boss when you're at the right range. So we want to stand a little a little ways away and uh, and we'll be doing peak damages. And as you can see, it's not the largest coverage, but um, we do have a pretty good time uh, maintaining and difficult content. So that's pretty good. Um, very enjoyable to be able to play because it is satisfying being tanky. I don't want that. As you can tell my loot filter is a little outdated. I've been focused on leveling. We made some major changes from the first uh, setup we were running um, Call of the Brotherhood um, up to about level 80 and uh, that helped a lot with pack clear but it wasn't really worth the ring slot and what I ended up doing was putting a haste into an essence worm and running um, discipline haste and um, after a while aspect of the spider um, aspect of the spider was really good uh, this is a great build for it because it makes you get hit less as well as increases the damage you deal but at the end of the day um, we're doing plenty of damage already and we don't really need um, that less multiplier that well it's it's a small more multiplier um, to our damage so here's the uh, boss kill I'll just show you real quick it burns it right down um, on the t16 it's pretty good um, uh, we've calculated uh, the damage is approximately 3 million Shaper DPS. Um, so I'll show you how we went about that um, after we go over the gear. Let's see if we still have some space here. And I don't know why I'm keeping a skull head, but it's too late now. Um, maybe after the video, we'll go through the dump tab and get a little more organized. Uh, for now, we'll just do that. All right, so let's start with the gear. Um, two Hawa Claws, fundamental. Uh, percent increased dex, percent increased intelligence, um, attack speed per dex, weapon elemental damage, and flat lightning damage to attacks with this weapon for 10 int. This is build defining, and this is what we were building around. It is fundamental. Um, <clears throat> if you don't want to use the claw, play a different build. Uh, in the claws, we use Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks, and Fortify, and in the other claw currently is Ancestral Protector, Grace, and Flame Dash. Grace is only there for um, uh, to have access to the Ball skill, and we don't actually run that in the Aura setup. We're just running Herald of Ash, Haste, and Discipline. Herald of Ash overtook Aspect of the Spider because it's just that much better for pack clear, and we do want to be mapping. We are a... Um, boss targeter but we are also a mapping build so it feels a lot better and we're going to continue going with Hell of Ash for a while. Um, next we'll go through the rest of the uniques. Uh, the Shaper's Touch is also uh, build defining. This is part of the um, trio of um, these build defining uniques. They grant us um, energy shield per strength, um, evasion per int, uh, life per dex is actually going to help your stun threshold a little bit because we're not immune to stun. We get some stun avoidance on our boots, which is a pretty good um, pretty good roll. So that actually allowed me to drop Soul of the Brine King because your Ghost Shrouds alone, um, if you start getting hit a lot, you will get stunned because your Ghost Shrouds won't come back. So ghost Shrouds are great, but um, you do need additional stun mitigation. Um, <clears throat> Shaper's Touch should have uh, Ellie Weakness on hit. I think I paid 2x for this. Um, I tried, uh, I think I tried 10 of them. Um, so basically spent an Exalt on high rolled uh, uh, gloves and uh, bricked most of them. Um, I guess in the end I did end up selling one of them for, for that much again, but um, just buy it. It's a lot easier. 
Next up is cyclopean coil. This one currently has the percent maximum energy shield roll. The life is obviously irrelevant to us. Um, this should be double corrupted in the temple. That would be your ideal uh, move here. Um, make sure it has 15% increased attributes. I've been trying to proc Alba. I've got mine waiting here. Um, that's ready to go. We've got an extra Astromentis. Um, probably going to double corrupt this one first. Um, it seems like Astromentis is going to win out over just about any other amulet. Um, there is some potential to get really high intelligence rolls and also um, uh, uh, damage per intelligence on a Shaper amulet, but um, very difficult to craft. And in order to um, get that, it um, just takes someone a lot of effort. Um, it doesn't seem like a really accessible um, option. You could try and craft it. I might try and craft one, but for now I'm happy with having um, the additional... Let's see if I can find this thing. Um, I'm content to have the additional stats, but if you look at this, this is pretty much going to be what? What? Okay. Zoom in. Okay. Okay. Um, so lots of attributes. Big int roll. Um, I think that's T2, but then it's got 1% increased damage per int, 10% elemental uh, penetration, and um, flat resistances. So that's pretty good. Uh, that would be probably your, your best in slot amulet. Um, but it's a little unrealistic at this point in the league. And... Um, you know, possibly for full min-maxing, that would be something to work towards. But for now, I'm content with massive attribute gain because we're gaining ES per strength, we're gaining attack speed per dexterity, and um, we're gaining energy shield and damage from stacking intelligence. So at the moment, we're sitting at 1,422 intelligence, 350 life, and 331 dexterity, which is significant because we cannot be ignited if strength is higher than dexterity. That's pretty strong, especially if you're going to be farming guardians. Um, you prefer to have that flask slot freed up. So what it does is it allows us, it enables us to run a three unique flask setup, and we just have freeze and curse removal here um, as our suffixes, and um, <coughs> this synergizes great with the belt because we get free shock immunity. And on top of that, um, by balancing our strength a little higher, um, we also get um, one percent increased damage per five of our dexterity, which ends up being um, uh, somewhat something over uh, sixty percent increased damage. Um, that's global damage. That's not a more multiplier, but it's a pretty high. That sixty percent increased is basically like the spell damage roll on um, the shaper's uh, ring. So that's pretty good. Um, so those are the uniques, uh, rare items. We have Sorcerer Boots. I found these. You can get them um, without the aspect for a lot less. Um, I crafted the aspect on it because they dropped without move speed and they were pretty good for what I was doing. Uh, so I, I took them through the Uber Lab. I put Aspect of the Spider on it and intended to run Aspect of the Spider. Um, but Herald of Ash just is better for mapping. When I go do Shaper or something like that, I will put uh, aspect of the spider back on and continue to use it. Um, so nice little option there. Big intelligence roll, um, average energy shield roll, but it's good enough. And that stun avoidance um, enchant is um, what's enabling us again to, to pick up Soul of Solaris. Um, so that's a great node, and um, take no extra damage from critical strikes if you have taken a critical strike recently. That means that you can't get like double crit, and basically it feels like a one shot. So um, we want to pick that up, so we want to get Stun Avoidance somewhere other than the Pantheon. Um, Alright, rings are pretty straightforward. Intelligence, Energy Shield, Resistances, Weapon Elemental Damage. Um, intelligence, Energy Shield, Resistances, um, Elemental Damage, and um, Flat Increased Damage. Well, not flat, but uh, uh, Global Increased Damage. Um, the helm came early. That was a fossil service, so we um, mirrored a helm and ended up getting these rolls. Uh, extremely lucky, but um, 
that was pretty build enabling. I had about 400 chaos at the time, and I spent all of it on the service and the fossils, and it was totally worth it. Um, it could have totally bricked, and then I would have just had to use a bricked one for a while, and um, but we got lucky. Uh, the armor took about 300 chaos spams to hit. It was um, it was a lot of alt regling. It was a lot of chaos spamming, and I rolled over the percent int and T1 ES once with the with the alteration, and that felt pretty bad. But I did finally hit it on a um, on a chest, and then we colored it, and then six linked it. Um, a decent ES roll is all you need here, and we're looking for percent increased intelligence and um, and a high intelligence flat roll. Um, as you can see from the colors here, um, there it's five off colors, which is insanely difficult to hit. So um, we did not change the colors when we opted to pick up point blank on the tree. Now we've changed the pathing on the tree and reached all the way down, and we took out our point blank gem and replaced it with slower proj. Now um, other, something else would be better. Um, it's not huge damages, but anything else would involve changing the colors. Um, it would be a little easier to hit uh, something to put, um, you know, like four off colors and then you use elemental uh, uh, focus in there and that would be pretty good because we're not really shocking anyways. Our shocks are um, only really on like, like low life mobs. Um, so, um, we we're sticking with slower proj. Energy leech gets swapped with conch effect for shaper, and but in maps energy leech just feels really good. Um, increased area of effect is not really useful, um, maybe while leveling, but um, yeah, focus on your elemental damage of attacks, GMP, ancestral call, and get that level twenty one molten strike. Um, <coughs> Uh, slower projectiles again in the helm, linked with ball lightning, linked with GMP, linked with cast wind damage taken, all low level. So we want this thing to proc as much as possible. Um, the reason for this is we're using a watcher's eye with energy shield gain on hit while it's affected by discipline, and also uh, onslaught on, on kill for four seconds while affected by haste. So that is part of the reason that we're running the haste aura. It's a mapping build. We want to be able to get around quickly. Um, this all synergizes really well. Um, so, that's the helm cast and damage taken. We have Immortal Call, Innervate, cast and damage taken, and Wave of Conviction. And the Innervate is what um, procs the Wave of Conviction to do more lightning damage than fire damage, which is what you, you need in order to make it penetrate. Um, it will apply, as it says, 25 per, minus 25% to elemental resistance matching highest damage taken. So we want to make this do more lightning damage than fire damage. And um, as a result, the enemy, when the enemy is hit by it, they will lose 25% um, lightning resistance, which is very good. We are generating endurance charges. Immortal Call could probably be a higher level, but we um, aren't really having any problems with that. Uh, we're using the Cute Dog trick for Intuitive Leap. So we pick up Overcharged for free, and we pick up Melding for free. We're very good. Um, Highly recommended. It allows you to just forget about, you can use whatever curse you want, and you can just forget about um, charges. So, and because it's, um, it's we're not so dependent on charges for bossing, they're just kind of a bonus, so we can easily do Shaper without um, having to think about how to generate frenzies on hit or something like that. Um, I would stay away from Blood Rage because it just doesn't feel good on a CI build. Um, we went over this claw, we've covered the gloves, Herald of Ash, Haste, Enlightened Level 3, Discipline, in the boots. Um, that could be somewhere else, those two could switch, but um, the Enlighten, it turns out, does not apply to Aspect of the Spider. So, um, it, as you can see, there's no text here, where otherwise there is, um, with these gems, there is a plus in a square, and that indicates that it's being affected by the Enlighten. Um, we don't need a level 4, although it would be better. Um, we're easily able to get away with our 276 mana. Um, so that's the gear. 
Um, we'll just cover the jewels first. We pick up three fertile mines, um, one, two, and three, and we place them in areas where we're picking up large amounts of dexterity. This one's adding, I think, uh, 100, uh, 105. This one's adding 150, and this one's adding 105 intelligence. So it turns our fangs of the viper to intelligence. It turns our um, our, our uh, ballistic mastery to intelligence, and they turn our art of the gladiator to intelligence. So these are very critical jewel slots. It, it's um, really giving. Uh, without this, I had about uh, a thousand um, intelligence. And now that I've done this, uh, it, we've gotten a massive boost. Especially once you have all that um, all that scaling. Once you start getting your percent attributes. Um, it starts to skyrocket. So um, let's start at the beginning of the tree. Um, we go up this way and we just take a hard left. Okay, trickery is a really good node. We want to take trickery, but um, we are more interested in penetration. So maybe the build isn't done yet. Maybe it needs one more level and then we can get trickery. Um, but for now, we're going to pick up that 4% penetration and be happy about it. Um, this pick this up early. We take this. We put a fertile mind here. It, use it as soon as you're using your claws. Um, this whole area is really beneficial. Um, come down here. Take forces of nature. Pick up the strength and intelligence nodes because remember we are trying to boost also our lower stats. So we're going to be picking these up. Strength and intelligence. Um, and because we don't have the intelligence, uh, we don't have strength scaling anywhere, but we do have dexterity scaling. So we don't need to invest in it very much to get them both pretty high. So we invest in strength a fair amount. And that's fine because that those three nodes are giving us um, a couple hundred energy shield on top of it. So that's uh, also beneficial. So this is obviously a switch that was made later in game where I came out this way and then came back through here and it's just what works with the amount of points I have. There are other ways to do it. You'll figure it out. Um, come up here, take Essence Surge around the same time you switch to CI. Come over here after you've done that and take Deep Wisdom, take Arcane Focus, take Arcane Will. Um, this whole area is going to be really significant energy shield boost, especially since being a trickster. We are gaining because of our weave, the arcane ascendancy, are gaining a lot of mana. So we have coincidentally a fair amount of mana, and so it doesn't hurt to add some and get that little bit of energy shield boost. This node alone adds uh, about uh, 450 energy shield, so that's pretty good. Um, once you're CI, you should take that, and we'll also pick that up and uh, get that big extra energy shield boost. I'm going to rush elemental overload, maybe want to come straight across here and go right to it. Um, I used the flask nodes for a long time, I used blast radius, but it turns out that coming down and taking point blank and all of this intelligence is just so much better. Um, but it's still worth coming down here to place our wildfire jewel. Uh, make sure it has corrupted blood on it. Um, you want to free up a flask and have your corrupted blood so that you don't need to worry about bleeds. Um, by having a corrupted blood count be inflicted on you, you will n no longer require a bleed flask. So that's pretty good. While we're over here, um, uh, we're going to pick up these nodes. Uh, Holy Dominion, um, elemental damage, elemental resistances. We need both. Um, melee critical strike chance doesn't really apply to us, but it might sometimes help better proc our elemental overload. Um, but what we're interested in here is penetrates 3% resistances. Um, elemental damage of attacks, strength and intelligence, very good. Same thing over here. We want the uh, resistance penetration. We want the big energy shield nodes. And this one's on the fence. Um, that could get dropped, but for mapping, it's worth the two points. Um, so <coughs> when we come over here, uh, we will come down and take Harrier. We will take. Um, this jewel socket is just where the watcher's eye happens to be, but these ones are spoken for. So that's where the watcher's eye is. Um, again, this build depends on the energy shield gained for each enemy hit while affected by discipline. This cost me four exalts. It was totally worth it. It's what got the build rolling and got me into um, red maps um, and just ran straight into Shaper. It was great. Um, Charisma um, is a total of 12% reduced mana reserve, and that's what makes it possible to run haste, which is 50%, run discipline, 
and run Harold of Ash. Um, <clears throat> if we didn't pick that up, we would have to run a different Herald instead of Haste, or uh, maybe Aspect of the Spider, no Haste, and Herald of Ash could be pretty good. But um, at a higher level, it is worth picking that up. Haste is really good for this, and um, especially when you're zooming around your Atlas and you need to control that shape or influence. Um, so, Strength and Intelligence, great. Um, flash charges gain, increase maximum mana. So this node is actually giving us some energy shield. Um, how much is uh, should be right here. Um, we're gaining 29 intelligence from this node. We're gaining 182 energy shield. So it's actually um, not a waste. So that's pretty good. Um, finesse, attack speed, global uh, accuracy. If I drop all of these accuracy nodes, my accuracy is still at 95%. My hit chance is still at 5, 95% um, just because of the in insane amount of intelligence um, pairing with the Shaper's Touch, um, giving me enormous accuracy. So that's an old trick that's been um, a strategy for a long time, and that is a basic um, how a functionality um, trick. So come down here, we'll take Art of the Gladiator. Attack speed is always good. Um, movement speed helps because we get stuck on stuff with our whirling blades. Um, strength, keep that strength up. Um, proj damage, pretty good node. Um, take these two, point blank is critical, and that covers the tree. Um, What did I miss? We want to talk about the flasks. Serious promise, get a high elemental damage roll. Um, Quartz flask is for delving. Um, curse removal is what works. Um, remove freeze on your movement flask. Um, I like having extra charges. You could also have increased duration, but um, that's just fine. Dying sun, get this as soon as possible. It was about 2x when I bought it. Um, I found this myself, but they're only worth a couple chaos anymore, so it's easy to pick one up with uh, penetration, not like in Legacy League when they were like three exalts if you got a penetration roll. But um, uh, double corruptions on the claws would be attack speed um, um, and really looking for calling strike there. Uh, that would be a major boost. Um, pretty pretty close to time to do that actually. Um, so that covers the gear. We've talked about all the gem links. Um, we've done a little demonstration of what the build does. Um, I can show you we've made it to um, uh, depth 323. It's not uh, substantial but we're not really pushing delve. We just want to be down to monster level 83 so that we can sustain our maps. Um, Again, this build is all about mapping and um, not necessarily just speed clearing. We want to be getting in there and successfully um, burning down the boss very easily on any map we go into. So it's uh, wildly successful at this. It's um, repeatedly killed the Guardians, um, consistently uh, Deathless Shaper kills, and um, hopefully eventually um, I will make it work for Uber Elder. So that's all for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope somebody wants to play this build because I've had a blast with it. Um, it's really fast. It's really fun. Molten Strike's great. And uh, peace out.